But Roman was a part of that 2006 draft class with the New Orleans Saints where you could start to feel the vibe come back with uh-huh. the, the city and the relationship between the franchise and the city. Roman, we're starting to see that right now with the Pelicans. Take me back to that time when you were a rookie and, and the city fell back in love with the New Orleans Saints and what it was like to be a part of that team. Well, it was special. Uh, we had just come back after, you know, Hurricane Katrina. Unfortunately, I was not – well, fortunately, I was not there for that. But right. seeing how everybody was coming back. But it just really just gave the whole city a couple of hours just to kind of get away from the everyday heartaches and, and pain that they were going through, whether it was losing family, losing everything they owned, and just get away from that for a little bit just to give them some kind of break from those things. Uh, I think that was the biggest difference for what we were going through in 06. Versus now, you look at this Pelicans, they're just excited because mm-hmm. you have some exciting players. You have people that control the media market, like, you know, not only Zion Woods, but Lonzo Ball and that whole thing. I mean, he brings more eyes on there as well. So mm-hmm. people are just excited to have basketball and actually be relevant and have some relevancy to their, uh, to their basketball team. Is New Orleans the only city that the starting quarterback of the professional franchise could ride his bicycle to and from the game? <laughs> uh... In New Orleans, I don't think Drew would do that. Yeah. But that's what Teddy's yeah. doing. Oh, Teddy's doing it. Yeah. Yes, Teddy oh, Teddy right now is riding his bicycle to and to and from the game. He stopped in a bar last week on his way home. Well, I think, first of all, him stopping at a bar, that means he's getting used to the culture there. Let's give him some credit on that. <laughs> uh, that's what we like to do. And also, look, I mean, if you, it, look, you couldn't do that years ago. Now that people actually can live downtown, and there's so many different options to do those things. And it is a lot of apartments and condos popping up right around the stadium. So I think it's cool that Teddy wants chooses to ride his bike. Not only that, but he's looking out because parking is getting out of there. It's terrible after the game. <laughs> well, I and thought... he's being smart about it. He's saving some gas. Yeah. He's looking out for it. My wife would say he's looking out for the world and, you know, cutting down on emissions and things like that as well. So I like that Teddy's doing this move. And also I like when I lived in Charlotte that I would walk to the game or ride my bike or my, my two-wheel – segue and just kind of just get in your own little zone takes you a little bit longer you're just kind of seeing all the fans and everything walking up you're kind of taking a peek of what the atmosphere is going to be like inside the stadium because you know if it's buzzing on outside the stadium it can only get that much better when you get inside of it i thought the reporter one of the reporters had a great follow-up to him they said aren't you worried about the potholes around the city he said yeah that's why i ride my bike i'm worried about my car <laughs> you gotta save it exactly. i'm not trying to mess up my rear. exactly hey so ro let's let's look at on the field before we look forward to jacksonville take us back last week tampa bay a game that a lot of people you know could kind of position as a trap game a lot of people even had tampa bay winning that game uh the saints took care of business convincingly and I want to start again with Marshawn Lattimore because for the second week in a row my man followed the number one a two-time pro bowler Mike Evans and he shut him down as a longtime professional defensive back what did you see out of Lattimore look I've been harping on this for the last two weeks every time we come on you guys act like Marshawn did not pay attention when people are talking trash or saying that he was giving up all these yards two weeks ago right he knows how to play ball. This guy's a lockdown, legit, you know, top tier corner in this league right now for a reason. And when he focuses in and understands what he's trying to get done week in and week out on the little thing, Marshawn could be one of the best corners, if not the best corner in the NFL. He's shown he's been an all he's been an all pro. He's been a Pro Bowl since he came into the league. He will continue to be one of those guys and talk about and will get paid at a high level at some point soon. And when he locks in, he's so good because he's fast. He has great ball skills. He's physical at the point of at the line of scrimmage. Not only that, but he has great size. He's six foot. So he's a big corner that can run and matches up well versus these other really big receivers. Yeah, and he's been excellent. Another guy who's been excellent, Ro, that a lot of people were willing to write off very quickly, Marcus Davenport. Right now, he is the only pass rusher in the NFL getting pressures on over 20% of his rushes. So one of every five times he's making the quarterback feel him um, how how impressed have you been with his sacked. rise? I need to get him to get sacked. Mm-hmm. And when he gets to the quarterback, continue to be smart around the quarterback. Last year, he got pressures all the time as well, but he was getting penalties on top of it when mm-hmm. he was roughing the passer. He'd have a face mask. He'd do something else. So he's continued to improve his game, and he's getting better. He's getting smarter about the way he's going about his business, which is good. And they draft him because he has a lot of upside and potential coming from a smaller school to where he can get after these pass rushers and, and, and do some things like that. 
But, you know, we just wanted to convert those pressures into sacks. Mm. Then we can actually see him celebrate a little bit, show some more personality. I think that's going to be the next continued growth in his, uh, in his career. Roman, I feel like we disrespect the stat of the Saints defense not allowing a 100-yard rusher in 31 straight games, including wow. the playoffs. I mean, like, we don't talk about that a lot. How, 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 how good is that in that league? I mean, it's really good. Look, the Saints make a conscious effort to make sure teams do not run the ball. I think D.A. is a, a big advocate of that. Like, he wants you to make the teams pick the ball up. Like, if, if you don't ever stop a team from running the ball, they'll never have to throw the ball to move the, foot, move the ball or score on you. If teams could just turn around or hand it off to the running back and just run it all day, that's what they want to do anyway. Then it opens up the passing game and the play-action game and all the other things around you. So if I can nullify and eliminate the run game, then it only makes teams one-dimensional. So then we just got to handle that side of it. And we also got to be able to mix in some better pass coverages and things like that. But D.A., Dennis Allen, is the main guy that will put up eight, nine guys in the box to make sure you have to pick the ball up. Sometimes it leaves our cornerbacks more too much one-on-one matchups on the outside. But you, at least you know what you're going into. We're going to know that we're going to stop the run. We're going to make teams have to pick the ball up and beat us and throw it downfield. Talking to Roman Harper, Super Bowl champ here on Off the Bench, 104.5, 100.3, ESPN. Ro, uh, one thing that I'm very impressed with, and I want to hear your thoughts on it, has been Alvin Kamara and Mike Thomas's success without Drew Brees. At times, you've seen players go elsewhere out of this offense, and they go from being dominant to kind of falling off a little bit. Kamara and Thomas have stayed dominant. I'm very impressed. With, not only that, but it's not just about without Drew Brees. It's more like everybody knows that those two guys are getting the ball every play. Okay, yeah. <laughs> still able to find ways to do it. I think that's what's more impressive to me. It's not like it's a lack of Drew Brees. Look, the way that Sean develops and draws up plays to put his guys in position to be successful, I continue to harp on that. I've seen it for many, many years. And I see Sean continue to get more creative, more dynamic ways to find his guys the ball in space to allow them to be playmakers. Like, look, everybody knows Michael Thomas is going to get 13 throws at him. And he still comes up with 11 or 12 catches yeah. out of 13 throws. So you look at that, and not only that, but Alvin Kamara really hasn't dropped off without, with the absence of Mark Ingram. So – uh, you know, you, you see the running game maybe take a step back, but, hey, Alvin Kamara is still doing everything that we, we noticed that he can do, which is break a lot of tackles, make people miss, be slick in the passing game, he always show up in the run game, and just find ways to get 150, 160 yards a game, yep. every game, no matter what the situation is. And also coming up with clutch big runs, clutch big catches by Michael Thomas. And I, I just love watching it. I think the best play I saw last week was Sean designed to play where Ted Ginn caught the touchdown pass, but – it was really – this play was set up because the tight end released down the field fast, took the safety's eyes. Then Ted again was slow to release. Next thing you know, he kind of slipped right up on him and ran a post route. Great blocking. Teddy, Ted Bridgewater was allowed to step up in the pocket, clean pocket, good throwing angle, clean sideline, throw it right there, put it right on Teddy for a touchdown. It's just a play design that allowed him to get that so open. It's amazing to continue to see those things. And little things like that just lets me know that everybody's in sync. Sean knows what quarterback he has with Teddy Bridgewater. Sean knows what kind of – what players he needs to put in certain situations, how he's finding ways to get different guys open. Not only that, but then now we got um, – oh, my gosh, his name stood my uh, – why is he stood my name? The quarterback, uh, everybody. Bridgewater, uh, Taysom Hill? Favorite. Taysom Hill yeah. even throwing the ball. So, like, these things like that is what I, I, I love to see out of Sean because he's still holding back. He's still got more, more bullets in the, in, the, in the gun in the arsenal to keep throwing at other teams. Roman Harper Weekly brought to you by El Rio Grande Mexican Restaurant. Get over there on uh, Airline Highway and ask for a Harper Reader or online. Harper Reader, what a name. Check out the, uh, the Hemp Doctor. Isn't that great? Is that excellent. great? excellent. It just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> all right, uh, so Harper, you've played in big games at all levels, uh, college and the NFL. You played in NFC Championship games. You played in big games on Saturdays. LSU Baton Rouge right now is the nucleus of the college football world. What's the difference between, a, what's the difference between a big game on Sunday and a big one on Saturday? Uh, I, I think Sunday, you, you got to come at it with your professional. I, I think Saturdays, look, man, you start to really kind of enjoy the festivities around you. Yeah. You understand, like, hey, when game day shows up, it's a little bit bigger, right? Versus, like, in the Sundays, look, the games all get big in December. Or, mm -hmm. in the, in, like, the more you win, the bigger the games get. Mm -hmm. It's not like that in college always. Like, you just get, like, a big primetime game sometimes. But then next week, you might be playing, like, Right. Northwestern State, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of a drop off, but 
But, yes, I think it's a big opportunity for LSU. Not only that, but everybody loves what they've seen out of LSU offensively and all these other things. But I'm looking to see how much they're going to be dominant defensively this week. they got to really show up in a big way. Understand that Florida can't just move the ball on them, you know, just play, you know, methodically down the field. They have to score with big plays. Florida does offensively with his backup quarterback in the run game that they're going to do. So I want to see how Florida's going to attack LSU's defense. And also Florida, how they're going to match up up front versus LSU's offensive line and how they're going to get after this quarterback. Because right now LSU's scoring all their points through the air. And, and everybody, you know, talks about LSU's ground game. But it's really through the, through the air and what, what Joe Burrow's doing right now through that and how's this off this defensive line of Florida going to try and get after this uh, this quarterback at Harp forty one every Thursday morning right here with us on Off the Bench the man. former Saint safety Alabama safety Roman Harper talk to you next week buddy LSU wins by ten oh, 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 love let's it go there he is close that hour two next.